Reidenberger Hearst beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I have got a strange one today from Germany, and it is the Reidenberger Hearst beer, gluten-free. Now, there's a lot to get through in this, with the brewery, with the style of beer, and with the ingredients, so just bear with me. You might get bored, but if you're a beer geek, you're going to like it, I think. Okay, first of all, Reidenberger. They are a brewery who have been going quite a long time, actually. Their history is a little bit sketchy. They say they've been going since the 1700s. They didn't brew their first real beer under their name, and it was a wheat beer, until 1893. So you can take the whole history with a pinch of salt if you look on their website. But needless to say, they've been going quite a long time, and they have a tradition of brewing German-style beers now they're also brewing some very different styles of beers as well. They do a craft beer range, they do Radlers, etc. They do the traditional stuff as well, the Bavarian stuff. But they also do what's known as the ancient grain beards, and I'll get onto this in a minute. But just I just want to quickly sort of run through the brewery. They've been going a long time. They would argue that, that they first gained a, a foothold in the region in the se late 1700s. They didn't brew their first wheat beer, as I just mentioned, until 1893, so you can work that out. But they've been brewing beer quite a long time. They do, in this day and age, market themselves as one of these organic, bio, eco-friendly style breweries. And I quite like that because when you do get these, especially German brewers, when they have a big emphasis on sustainability, organic crops or organically grown crops, etc., you tend to get good quality beer because you, they tend to be good quality ingredients that they use. So I'm quite looking forward to this. What I want to really explain though, I mean the history of the brewery, that's it, they've got since 1756. Yeah, well, they probably were brewing beer, but the modern form of the brewery, I would, I would argue that it goes back to the 1800s, 1893. But I'm not gonna split hairs. If that's what they wanna do, that's perfectly fine with me. But what I do wanna unpack on this one is the Hearst beer. Now, Hearst in German means millet, and millet is a type of grain. It's also considered an ancient grain because it goes back to ancient times. They were using that type of grain back in, I wouldn't say the Stone Age, but certainly ancient times. And it's quite a versatile type of grain. They use it in animal feed. If any of you, any of you own birds at all, you'll know that you can buy millet. And the, the, the <laughs> it's one of my favorite sayings, you know, when somebody says something else, like, yeah, the birds love it. Birds really do love millet. And I don't mean the female variety, I mean the feathered variety. Is that sexist? I don't know, I don't fucking care to be honest, but yeah, they do like millet, and I remember when I was a kid, my mum had uh, a couple of cockatiels, and uh, one of them used to, he used to mimic the phone, so he nicked, his name was Telecom, quite a funny little bird actually, but yeah, he used to go mad, whenever you get millet, you'd hang it from the side of the cage, and he'd fucking devour it, but millet in brewing is quite interesting, because the use of millet in Africa for brewing beer has been going on for a hell of a long time, and it's very popular. And the way that they brew beer in Africa with the millet is very similar to the process used with crystal malt. So for example, you would get, you basically try and get the, the sprouts or the shoots growing 
so the malt grain would produce more sugar and with that sugar they would be intending to feed these new shoots that are, are sprouting amongst the flowers these new shoots that are are sprouting but obviously what brewers do they stop that process and you're left with a hefty amount of sugar within this grain and when it goes into the boil you do get them nice sweet flavors come through eventually in the in the brew but that's how millet is is used for brewing and i'm assuming that's what they've done here now this is gluten free as well now gluten free beers are nothing new they're very popular at the moment actually and it's a process that beer goes through it shouldn't have any effect on the flavor they just remove a certain enzyme to i think it's is it is it three parts per million i can't remember the exact but it's a percentage of a parts per million that's the unit of measurement they use that allows a beer to be called gluten free and that's obviously what they've done here as well and i'm just looking here if you look at that that's exactly what millet looks like now remember that from you may have you know if you've ever looked in any bird cages and so you've seen stuff like that it's very small it's and they call it some of it's called pearl as well not to be confused with pearl barley i don't think it's the same thing but they're very very small tiny type buds that you get on like a, a long sort of stalk and that's what millet looks like and it's an ancient grain they've been using it for centuries and as i say in africa that's what they would brew a hell of a lot of beer with so obviously it's fermentable as well oh I'm fucking knackered i need to lie down but i'm quite looking forward to this because it's got it talks a good fight and obviously it doesn't conform to the reinheitsgebot with millet because i don't know whether millet is classed as a malt I, I i really don't know but it contains water hearse malts now hearse malts is millet malts or ancient malts so i i suppose it would do actually yeah so it's classed as a malt so technically that does conform to the reinheitsky but whether that means anything or not i don't know uh, it contains hops and it contains yeast what is the oh yeah so everything's got an asterisk beside it the hops have got an asterisk the yeast has got an asterisk and the malt has got an asterisk and that's just basically saying that it's from an organic agriculture and yeah organic i don't really know what the criteria is for organic because obviously they must be using pesticides and stuff like that so this whole purity law i've mentioned it a few times but it it really doesn't guarantee that you're not getting any chemicals in your beer chemicals are a part of life we are using and consuming chemicals with almost everything that we eat your fruit is covered in pesticides your vegetables are covered in pesticides even your glassware if you use dishwashers or if you use washing up liquid there's chemicals in that and there's residue on the glass so we're consuming ke chemicals all the time it's just the bad chemicals we don't want to consume anyway with that out of the way let's investigate the beer okie dokie free 30 mil bottle 4.5% it is store in a cool dark place i'm getting good at this german i've started learning it and uh, it's coming a little bit more naturally to me now but i'm nowhere near able to have a conversation in german so don't get any big ideas speciality tat brauer in the eighth generation which basically means this is the eighth generation that the brewers or the family have owned this brewery for so yeah and it's from bavaria and there you go. So let's get it open and let's see what's going on. I can't remember where I got that. I think that might have been from Beers of Europe. It's been, I know it's been in the fridge a while and I've left it in there for some reason. And it was probably because I had other beers to try at the time. There's the cap. It looks like three roses. Yeah, it is. Three roses and MK. Riedenberger, I think that's how it's pronounced, is it? Yeah, Riedenberger. Riedenberger, one of the two. I've got to work out my IEs and EIs, how they're pronounced. Wow, this looks a bit different. This looks like a Radler. Look at that. Are you sure this is not a Radler? 
No, it's a Hearst beer. Well, that certainly looks different. Look at that. That to me looks like fizzy pineapple juice. Doesn't look like a beer at all. What are we getting on the nose? Oh. That's weird. Hmm. I've been talking a good fight with this and now I'm wondering what the fuck have I done here? There's a really sweet aroma coming from this. Not artificial sweet, it just doesn't smell. It tastes, sa it, it, it smells sour. And I'm thinking I've got a bad bottle here because it's a very similar style of aroma that I got from the, the Varken beer. I tried some of their Slep Slipnia lager and it had a horrible, now I like sour beer, don't get me wrong, but this doesn't smell great. The fact the carbonation has died really quickly and that fucking color, mm, this has got the hallmarks of a bad one. So, oh, I'm not sure about this. Fucking hell, after all that, and it turns out like that. I could be wrong though, it, it might be nice. So I'm gonna approach this with an open mind, but the signs are not looking good. Wish me luck. Zum Wohl, as they say in Germany. Oh. oh, that's fucking vile. What the fuck is that? Right, it's really fizzy. And it's, you only have to look at it. That looks like a beer that's been exposed to some wild fermentation and it's just fucked it right up completely. This is a top fermented beer and it smells, it doesn't smell nice. And the, and the flavor, there's a sourness to it but not in a good way. And then the aftertaste is earth. And that's a fucking bad bottle. And I don't want to drink anymore. That is disgusting. That is fucking vile. And I don't think a German brewer worth his salt, especially not in Bavaria, would taste that and say that is worthy to go out. It, it, something's happened there and it's bad. It smells not nice. The aroma's faint, but the aroma that is there that I can get, that doesn't smell good at all. I'm going to take one more mouthful out of it, but I ain't going to enjoy it. If you can imagine sweet sherbet, but with a horrible earthy aftertaste mixed together. It ain't good. It tastes like there's sugar in there. Oh, no. If that's what they intended, then it's fucking vile. I think that is a bad pint, personally. But either way, I don't care what it is. It's not good. So what's the verdict on Rydenberger Hearst beer? It's disgusting. It's fucking horrible. That's what the verdict or my verdict is. And that's from Bavaria as well. I can't believe a German brewer worth its salt would send out a beer like that. It looks wrong. The color look just looks wrong. The aroma is bad. What aroma there is there. But the flavor is disgusting. There's sour notes in there like sherbet, sweet sherbet, sickly sweet sherbet and then a horrible earthy aftertaste and that's it. And it just tastes wrong. It doesn't even taste like beer, to be honest. And it ain't nice. So 
I'm not going to label the point, but it's fucking dog shit. That is going to get, it's going to get a 0 out of 10, because there is no redeeming features in there. I've took three mouthfuls out of it, and that's three fucking mouthfuls too much for me. <sighs> Signs were there when I poured it out. Fizzy, head died really quickly, and the colour. If either, or oh, if all three of them come together, you know you've got a bad point. And I remember, if you look at my review of the Burton Bridge stuff, the two Burton Bridge brewery beers that come from the center of brewing in the United Kingdom, Burton on Trent, and they were very similar. They had a horrible sour note to it, which means that it's oxid oxidized during the fermentation. And it had the very similar, it was cloudy like that, and it had Lots of carbonation on the initial pour. The head went to nothing and then it went flat. And that's exactly what that's done. It's horrible. It's getting a 0 out of 10. If that's the best you can do, nah. Dog shit, mate. Fucking reevaluate what you're doing with this beer because it's fucking pony. It don't even taste like beer. It's vile. 0 out of 10, not recommended. And remember, I'm drinking this shit so you don't have to.